Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. I am Lakeisha Mavery. I am your host and founder. And we are now, believe it or not, on day 10 of our 12 Days of Books and Businesses event. Y'all, Christmas is this Saturday. Let that sink in. It is this Saturday. I just cannot believe that we are now about to have Christmas. It seems like we started this in November and right around that time we hadn't even reached Thanksgiving yet. And now we are almost into Christmas and into a new year, 2022. So I have been enjoying it. Uh, I hope you all have been enjoying it. You know, if you've been enjoying it, just put some hearts in the chat tonight. Uh, because we've had some phenomenal guests. I have learned so much. I've been inspired. And tonight is no different, y'all. Our special guest tonight is Miss Eleanor Ward. And y'all, she's just not a special guest, but she's a friend of mine, okay? She is a wonderful person. And uh, we met at our church, Day Spring Family Church. And from the moment I met her... <laughs> We click, okay? Y'all, I love people who are genuine and real, okay? I love people that can say some things that I want to say, <laughs> but sometimes I don't say it, uh, but she will. And she is a loving, giving person, uh, and she's doing some great things. And I tell you, I'm so excited and proud of her. We're going to get into uh, tonight some of the uh, phenomenal things that she's doing uh, with her magazine, her coaching. Y'all, she's inspiring me to even want to get a TikTok. I see her on Instagram with all of these videos. And I said, no, wait a minute now. Eleanor is not going to beat me doing some TikTok. I'm like, how is she doing all of this? But it is hilarious. It's very creative and it's hilarious. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't even have a TikTok account. I said, let me get a TikTok at least so that I can go ahead and uh, get in the game too. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all tonight, please help me welcome Miss Eleanor Ward. How are you tonight? I'm doing great. How's everybody doing out there? I love the <laughs> book club, y'all. It's just amazing. When she came out with this, I was just like, oh, I, I just, it's just an innovative idea that I had really never seen anybody put forth and put it out there. So I love it. I love that she's just keeping it going and it's just, grow, it's just growing and growing and growing. So I, I'm doing good. And how are you doing tonight? I'm good. I'm good, girl. It has been over two years and y'all, Eleanor is not a stranger to the open book. I can say that she's even been, uh, as one of the members and supporters coming to, uh, our events and she's even been a vendor at I think a couple of our events and so forth. Um, so she's not a stranger. She, when I tell you, please close the door. Thank you. Y'all, y'all already know I'm on vacation. Okay. So we talked about this, uh, my audience <laughs> that my kids are here and that y'all know I'm professional. My husband's on a whole other like shift. And so I'm here during the week, uh, on mommy duty and the open book duty. But as I was saying, y'all, it means a lot to me. And I, I want to publicly say this to her. It means a lot to me when people believe in the vision that God gives to you, not just by word, but by action. I can say that Eleanor behind the scenes have sown seeds when I have not even asked. She has sown seeds into the open book. She doesn't even know I was going to say this, but I just feel led to say it. She has sown great seed into the open book times where I wasn't even thinking about it and it's been a blessing and y'all that meant a lot to me it's, it means a lot to me and I want y'all to, to see the great thing she's doing tonight and I want us to support her and, and pour into her vision because she has so much that God has given her and she's just taking it and, and going I mean doing so much leaps and bounds and so Eleanor I know a little bit about you and so forth and have known you for over like what three years or so yeah, I mean, like two or three years um so tell us a little bit about yourself oh my goodness I am uh I'm a widow and um I've written my whole life but uh for a long time I was stuck on just one thing but I always wanted a magazine there's a magazine out 
I don't, I think it's still out called Town and Country. And it just, my mom used to get it and it just opened my eyes to the world. I was like, wow, you know, cause I didn't know all these amazing things existed. And I said, one day I'm gonna have a magazine. I didn't know what it was gonna be. So I thought it was gonna be a travel magazine. And uh, instead, when I started talking to people like Lakeisha and various other women, I'm like, this should be a small business magazine. And the holdup I had with the travel magazine completely changed. It's like the business magazine just poured out of my fingers. People just started coming on board and wanting to be part of it. And then it just poured out and it just started happening. And it's been happening ever since uh, this is our first year. And um, it's, it's been phenomenal. We've had, I met some phenomenal ladies. I met some people doing some amazing things. And I came to understand these are people that are in the small business space doing big business things, but they're not, nobody's talking about them, including myself. So that's part of what I, you know, wanted to get the magazine out there for. I love the Lord. The Lord loves me. <laughs> uh, so, you know, that's a huge part of my life as well that, you know, God is a very, he is the space of my life. Uh, I think I said I was a widow. I'm not married. I'm not dating. Don't have a secret boyfriend or that stuff. <laughs> it's, it's just me. And I, I needed that time and peace of not trying to be with someone to start making this stuff happen because God's giving you the vision, but if you're always distracted, nothing's going to happen for you. So that's a, a little bit about me. You know, I, 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 I'm still out looking for a church because I've moved. I'm close to an hour away from my old church. So it's just hard to get there. And so, you know, I'm just kind of out here praising the Lord and trying to get some things done. That's about it. <laughs> Y'all, when I tell you her magazine, she she just started talking about it. Uh oh, I'm dropping them over here. Um, she just started talking about the magazines, but y'all, the magazines are beautiful. She sent me uh some up to date ones. Uh, well, all of the not up to date, but all of them. Uh, when I say more up to date, more recent ones, because I had the first one. And y'all must uh, say uh, thank you, Eleanor, for giving the open book. Uh, that interview, if y'all know this, is right here. I love <laughs> it. That was the first. Hey, you know what? That was my very first interview about hey. the open book. And I am truly grateful. No one has ever asked me to talk about the open book. And so that meant a lot, y'all. I have this on my bookcase because it, wait not only do I have it on my bookcase but I have this at work uh in a sealed it's like a little sealed um uh, case <laughs> on my bookcase at work so I not only have it at home I have it at work and y'all because it meant so much to me and I'm so grateful but uh Oprah has nothing on her she has her picture <laughs> <laughs> on every cover okay a different thing okay and let me show look let me pick up the other one hold on <laughs> i'm up here dropping stuff that's look okay. at this y'all she thinks she fast look look at this just being fast showing the, the legs and everything there it Oprah is. has nothing on you <laughs> hey, you know people have asked me why are you opening the covers i said in 2022 right i'm going to open some covers but it really came out of a place of I couldn't afford anybody. <laughs> so <laughs> I, you know, I said, oh Lord, what am I gonna do? And I remember Oprah saying when she started her magazine, this one was a millionaire at that time. And she said she didn't, she said, I didn't want to pay anyone. And I thought, well, I can't pay anyone. So I did the Oprah. And it's it's very well received. And when I said I was gonna open the covers, I got a lot of backlash of people saying, Don't do that. So I was shocked. They said we like the Oprah flavor, just kind of leave it so I said well maybe I'll do two of me and two of some other people but when I came to you for the interview I wasn't sure you were going to do it and I was so thankful uh because I was really trying to work on my interview skills and I have a lot of people that still talk about your interview and how much they enjoyed it and they learned a lot about your company so if you think it's it's not out there and getting out there it is it is so. Oh, that means a lot to me. Thank you so much. I, I mean, that encourages me to keep going. I know following the last show, someone inboxed me about the, uh, when we had the virtual uh, Christmas caroling, because sometimes you're wondering, is this blessing anyone? I don't want to just be yeah. doing something just to do it. And God always sends someone to encourage me, just keep going with it. So thank y'all so much. Those of you who watch and support and share the videos, it really, really means a lot. So Eleanor, what prompted you to start the magazine? Like, because you have a variety of things, y'all. It's, it's not just 
interviews, but she has uh, very informative articles, uh, articles celebrating people. There are some inspirational sections and so forth, uh, grief sections. So what prompted you to do this magazine? I'm not gonna lie. A lot of people probably wouldn't admit it. The, my coaching was tanking and I was getting frustrated. And I was just kind of like, I'm in this business space. The coaching just wasn't happening at that time and moment. And I said, I have too much creative energy to just sit and do absolutely nothing. And I, and I just said, no, I'm going to use my energy to do something else. I don't think you should beat yourself over the head if one of your business ideas isn't working. And so for me, that's, I said, I've always wanted the magazine. Let me put it together. And that's what kind of pushed me forward because I, I was so upset and trying to make, I was trying to make fetch happen and it wasn't happening. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> okay, so if someone wants to, what's the process? Like if someone wants to uh, write an article or be interviewed or so forth, what's the process for that? Well, they can go to prosperitymag.info, uh, well, www.prosperitymag.info, and it's all there. It tells you how to submit, it tells you what to do, and it tells you how to contact me. Or if they're on Facebook and you go to my Facebook page, uh, I have no problem with people DMing because believe me, I usually get more in the DMs than I ever do on the uh, website. So they're welcome to just DM me and say, hey, I'd love to be in it. Oh, thank you so much. And they can do that. So it's, okay. it's a fairly easy process. And so how often are your magazines released? Right now they're quarterly. So that's once every three months. So that's going to be March, June, September, and December. Uh, and that's, uh, hopefully I'm hoping by 2023 will be monthly, but it's a lot of work to do the magazine. So I'm thankful the Lord told me to kind of take it in steps and this way I'm learning and I'm still able to put out a good product. I understand that you have to take your time. And so if someone wanted to order a magazine, do they just visit the website to order they that? Just visit either website that's on the screen now, the magazine is on both and you can order whichever issue you want you don't have to just be on there and guess you can you can order whichever one you like because each one is on on those sites okay good okay so then on there we saw uh another website the bigger fish to fry coaching and when i tell you i love that that title when i first saw it i love the title and i love your picture y'all if you visit her instagram she has a cartoon picture of herself it's so cute so you also not only do the magazine but you mentioned the coaching part too so what led you to start doing coaching and what type of coaching do you do initially i thought i was gonna be this life coach and just be out here like coaching and that was not happening people was just like mm, whatever girl <laughs> And I was so bad because I'm like, I'm certified and I should be having all these clients. And like I said, it just started going like this. And I was, I was just like, Wah! and so finally I said, you know, I need to niche down. What do I really want to do? Do I really want a life coach? And I came to realize, no, I don't. I want to do grief coaching. And so I kind of switched gears and came to really get in touch with myself. And um, I literally erased my old Instagram page and just started totally changing the focus. And um, when I started niching and talking about grief and kind of pulling things together, things changed. So have you like, what do you want to share a little bit about your testimony of what you've overcome on your grief journey? Some things you've had to overcome in that area? Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. My grief journey had, was bananas for a long time. So probably the first, oh Lord probably the first five to seven years since my husband and son have been gone for about about 15 years um I was 35 when I lost them and so my grief journey was not normal it wasn't like oh I get to grieve oh I get to get a new husband oh I get to get a new life because <laughs> people kept saying it's gonna be okay you get married again it's gonna be okay you still have your other son none of that happened I mean I still have my other son but none of the other stuff was happening and so my grief journey was rough. My in-laws sued me for wrongful death. I don't know how you can sue somebody for wrongful death from a car accident, but it is what it is. That went on. That lawsuit went on for five years. Oh, um, I did not really grieve during most of that time. So imagine trying to bury people 
had memorials. Then you had, the, I got served with the lawsuit an hour after we left my husband and son's memorial. And we were in that freaking lawsuit for five years. Sorry, y'all saying freaking. <laughs> okay. Wow. That is crazy. And it just dragged on and on. And I wasn't even fighting. I was just like, this has to end. And so there was really no peace. And I was, I went, I went into this space of just anger. I'm not going to, there was no other space I was in. I was angry. I was mad. I was like, I can't raise my kid. I can't live my life because we had moved out of state. I still had to fly back and forth to where the lawsuit was. My son began to resent me being gone so much because whenever they call you, you have to go to these types of things. Um, we didn't get the estate settled for, for a while, and when we did get it settled, it they ended up taking all my son's college money. He never got to go to college. He can go now, of course, but I mean, as far as him going on campus and stuff, they took all of that. So I think I had a, a, a everything up here was just, ugh. when I got to church, and this was, I, I went to Day Spring for, started in 2016. So it was about six years ago, something like that. And I started going to their grief program I was still balled up like this and uh I don't know I just broke and it was like a dam just open and I remember going to my pastor and I was still mad because I don't like crying and I said when is this gonna stop and I was like kind of going off on her <laughs> and she looked at me and she said it's not until it until it's done and I like that answer I was like I don't like crying but she was right it took oh a few years i'm not gonna lie y'all that's how much was built up and now when i cry it's just regular release but that was a different type of release so she was very right it did not stop until it was done because it had been so balled up for so long uh so then i said i don't want to live that way ever again and i started working on understanding grief and i came to realize i can't get over it and once i knew i couldn't get over it i said but i have to live with it I can't get over that I have 20 years of memories with a husband that's gone. I can't get over that I miss my 14-year-old's basketball games and seeing him run track. So once I began to realize how to manage my grief, that's when I made my own little my own little journey take a different step. And everything changed. It was like my whole attitude, my whole thought process, everything just kind of changed. And I'm glad you, you uh, were being transparent and honest because some people do experience anger uh, during the grief and process you know um we're all different we handle grief you know in totally different ways and so with your company bigger fish to fry tell us more about that it is uh do you do you all just focus just on grief or do you provide other services as well still mute <laughs> uh we our, our our whole focus is grief we do do basic life coaching if you want that and we also do what I call trauma-related grief, which means you have some type of trauma connected to your grief. Like for me, it was a car accident. We were all together. There are times I get a little loopy in the car. And I know that's just a trauma-related connection to my grief. And I may have to pull over and just kind of breathe through it. Or I may have a full-blown full -blown panic attack, something I didn't have until I lost my husband. And so now I know, okay, you're feeling, you're not feeling right. Where's the closest, whatever, McDonald's gas station, whatever. And I pull over and I may get a drink and just sit in the car 15, 20 minutes. And you have to really learn. It's so many of us out here just trying to push through. And that's so stupid. And I was doing the same thing to the point I get to work and be in the bathroom just <gasps> oh my God, about to fall apart. And so we offer our focus is grief and trauma related grief, but we definitely do uh, life, life coaching if you need it but that's our biggest focus. Um, and the reason it's bigger fish to fry is because someone told me um, they didn't like how I moved and they had bigger fish to fry. And my friend said, you know, that's what you should have your company because you're helping people. They got bigger fish to fry. They got bigger things to do. And so that's where it kind of came from. <laughs> oh, okay. I love that. Y'all, she sent me uh, this grief journal. I don't know if you can see it, that they but... Can. When I tell you the cover itself, I just love all of this. This is a wonderful journal, okay? It's a 30-day journal, but it has 
the day. It has some encouragement. It has a thought question. And there is plenty of writing space. Now, although it's 30 days, what this does, and I was sharing this with Eleanor earlier, is it gives people a chance to get started with the process. Uh, because sometimes, like she just said, we just try to get through it. I'm guilty of that. When my mom passed away, uh, and I shared this, you know, a couple of weeks ago, a week ago, um, I had a son, a newborn. I had just had my son four days before my mom passed away. So I kind of had to tuck that away, if that makes sense, so that I could keep going. Because guess what? Life goes on. It does not stop. We want it to stop when our loved ones leave, but it did not stop. And I held a lot of that in. It wasn't until probably months after that is when I went to visit, almost a year, I would say, probably almost a year, when I went to visit my mom's grave and it just came out. I went to a grave site by myself because I, I even felt like I didn't even have time by myself to really grieve. I either had my husband at home or kids at home. I never really had a long time to grieve. So my only alone time at the time was in the car or when I went to visit her gravesite, and I had to get that out. So having something to at least start the process, we know this is a lifelong ongoing process because it comes in waves, okay? Uh, it's not like we're going to always just, oh, get over it. No, it comes in waves. It could hit you stronger in year three than it did in year one. You know, mine was year four. This was a, a tougher, different year for me. Uh, and so this is a great start. So Eleanor, if someone wanted to order this, would they go to your website to order this as well? Uh, they will go to the website. It's not just so they won't think I'm lying to them. <laughs> it's not going to be up on the website until January 1st. We uh, had to finish it and get some things done, but uh, it will be officially up on the website for sale on the 1st. So they can grab one, get a few for your family because it is a starting point. And you don't know how much will pour out of you in that beginning until you look back at it later and then you'll go, mm. Wow, I was really like, whoa, I don't care if you look at it six months after you've done it and used it, you will really see some, you'll see some high points, and you're going to see some low points, but you'll really come to understand what you have to work on next. That's the beauty of that journal. And it's a, it's very much a beginner journal. And that's what I wanted. I love it. I love it. So right now, you know, we've gotten through uh, Thanksgiving and we have Christmas coming up. And so uh, we've been talking about this for the past few weeks. The holidays is such a difficult time, you know, for people that have lost loved ones or maybe have loved ones here and they're not speaking. Okay. That's a whole different topic, but you're still grieving what was, okay. What we used to do, big mama house, we used to go over there, or, you know, so what would be some advice that you have for people right now who are dealing with grief or depression? Uh, it could be because, and I'll be honest, some people, the depression could come from, we see everyone happy. We could be single and we thinking, I want to be married. You know, I want to have a family. We could think, okay, everyone's shopping. I'm barely able to pay my bills. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on. So I don't want it to just be grief, but people that are having like this depression and hard times right now, what are some things or strategies uh, that you suggest that we could take to help us navigate through the season? I think the best strategy you can have is making your plan. And that means getting out a piece of paper and writing down what you really want to do. And that, that can be hard to sit here and you get out your pen. And the first thing I want you to write down is, do I want to go to the family dinner? That's the very first one, because that's usually the biggest thing that we're having to go somewhere. It doesn't have to be dinner, but you know, you guys family gathering, whatever it is. So that's usually the biggest one. Do I really want to go? And then you have to write down the pros and cons if you go. And I would say, don't do more than about three pros, three cons. Why? Because you know what's really going on in your family. You know what's really happening. If it's that hard for you, stay home. Watch a fun movie. You know, let your family know. I can see you by Zoom. Zoom me in. Sometimes it's just not worth the headache that may come with it later. I have gone to some things, this was years ago, before I was really investing in myself. And 
I, by the time I got to the car, I was breaking down. It was just like, oh my God, they asked 500 questions. They said all this different stuff. So you may not be able to handle that. Why aren't you married? Because they may not know you broke up with the love of your life six months ago. So is it worth going to that? You may not be able to handle the grief questions because it doesn't always turn into grief. A lot of times it turns into reminiscent road, I call it. And they want to drive down the road because they don't have to go home and live with it. That's their friend, their homie. You have to go home and be like, oh my God, my husband's not here or my child's not here. They don't go home and deal with that. Then you have, I hate to say, the mean auntie, the mean mama, the mean whoever. And she just kind of picks at you all night. So I would say evaluate if you're going to go to the family gathering. Number two, decide. There's a big world. Maybe I want to travel this year. I just want to have a good time. So think about maybe travel could be put into your plans and you can go and do something you've never done before. Have a friend's holiday. It doesn't have to be just a friend's giving. You can have a friend's Christmas where it's just you and your buddies. You guys, you know, can have somebody cater to food, have wine and just have a blast. Turn on music and enjoy your home. And then you just may want to have an introspective time with yourself, which means I just really want to have quiet be up under the fireplace with some blankets. And that may be enough for you because it may be just enough for you to survive what's going on. So, and if you have the trauma, and I'm gonna knock this out real quick, the uncle or the auntie or someone that may have done things to you that they should not have done, I would not subject myself to going. The internet makes it look cute. I'm gonna snap back, clap back to all these people. But in reality, that's taxing too. If you have someone that hurts you in that major way, and your family won't acknowledge it, it's time to let them know, I won't be there until you do. So hopefully that kind of is a little bit of a helper. Wow, I love all of those ideas. Oh my goodness. And y'all, you know, Netflix, and a lot of people have been sharing uh, these little pictures of different movies, holiday movies, or fun movies to watch right now. So I'm glad that you brought that up. And then starting new traditions. I think that's what, I've been doing recently, me and my family, uh, even for Christmas, we're going to do a staycation somewhere, uh, Christmas Eve, we bought pajamas and going to go off for a little bit, uh, because, you know, we just need some family time and just away from the house time, you know, so, uh, I don't know what I'm cooking for Thanksgiving. I, I told him, I know I ordered some sweet potato pie, some chitlins, and I have some dressing that was frozen. Of course, he's not doing chitlins, <laughs> but, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. Have I shopped for Christmas? I've gotten a couple of things here and there. I'm not really bothered. I promise we cannot stress. This is not the time to stress or to get depressed. It's for not. one, going back to what we talked about, uh, the Christmas caroling event, Jesus is the reason for the season. And I think he's trying to bring us all back to that and put all this other stuff to the side. Not that it's not important, but to stay focused. Our pastor yesterday, she talked about making room for Jesus. And mm -hmm. I promise when we do that, we feel better. When we show love to others during this time and, and uh, look for ways to give and sow seeds, that also makes us feel better, you know, and not just focused on self because that's when we start getting depressed. Um, so these really are, go ahead. And I would say, not to interrupt you, and I, I did, with the depression, I just came out of a depression a few weeks ago, y'all, so I, I can completely understand it, it uh, it's just, can't, sometimes it comes out of the blue, there's just not always a rhyme or a reason, there's usually something going on, maybe we're not acknowledging what that may be, and you have to kind of sit and think about that, but I will say, tell somebody, open your mouth, tell a friend, tell a family member, you know, tell the doctor who don't want to listen, say whatever. And I remember going to my doctor a few weeks ago. This was literally about, about two months ago. And I told him, I don't feel right. And I felt like I was sliding. It wasn't grief related. So I want everybody to understand everything's not grief related. It just was something I was sliding into for some reason. And he just blew it off. He never said anything. And I kind of was there for some weeks. And then when I finally came out, I said, I knew I understood. I was unhappy about a few things, you know, in my life. So I started kind of working on those things. So if you're unhappy you may have to slide into it a little bit, slide in the left base. Don't stay there. Get up, get going, get moving. I can't tell you that walking is going to solve it. I can't tell you that exercise is going to solve it. Prayer helps. Doing things helps. Crafting helps. Telling people that you feel down. I have a girlfriend. I called her and I said, I just, 
I feel like I just can't. And she just listened to everything. And when I was done, I'm so thankful because she never says, oh, you're venting. I hate that word. She was just like, girl, I was there too. So thank God you called. <laughs> so you don't know what you could be helping somebody through. And me and her, at the end of the conversation, we were talking about the Real Housewives. We were cracking up, but it a lot lifted. And I didn't know she was going through it. And I think it was just kind of being alone and just being in certain spaces. And the holidays can make you feel some type of way. So it's okay. Tell somebody, talk about it. My family and I yesterday on Zoom, we're all over the country. We did a cookie decorating contest and we baked our cookies at our houses and we showed them on Zoom. And, who, you know, if you won, you got like an Amazon gift card from one of us or whatever. And so we did stuff like that. We did an ugly shirt yesterday as well. And um, so those are things that you may not think. Ask your family, hey, you guys are in Houston or you guys are in Arkansas or wherever they may be. Would you mind? Let's get together next week and do blah, blah, blah. You'd be surprised that you can make connections that way as well. So don't, don't let the depression overtake you. And don't let people tell you not to talk about it. Because I, I would say, you know, she was talking about our pastor, you know, Jesus' reason for the season. But the one thing she also talks about is your mental health. She doesn't play about that. And she will tell you, you need to go get some help. And she, I remember when I told her how I was feeling when I first started at the church and she took my hand and she said, I don't know how to deal with that kind of stuff, depression. But she put my hand into a licensed counselor at our church um, and she just put her hands together and she walked away. And so I'm still friends with the licensed counselor at the church, and I and but she helped me out of some great spaces. Have the right type of people around you as well that will lead you to the, the helpful person because she there was no pride in her. She wasn't like, oh, I know about depression and anxiety and suicide, and she's like, oh no, I don't know that stuff. Let's go over here. But I like that she didn't have enough pride to pretend that she did. It was like that's not my forte. And I love her for that because what she did saved my life and took me to a whole different level. That's a blessing. And, and you're so right. The Zoom, uh, because even when the pandemic first started, my family, we did uh, Zoom for both sides of our family. We connected on Zoom, had eaten our own food at our own home. So if that's something that could get you connected again, please do something like that. You know, I, I see a lot of people doing the Friends friends must, I think, where you get together with your friends, the girls time and so forth, just make it your own, make new traditions. And I know that's hard because I'm just now figuring that part out. Like sometimes we just have to start, <laughs> you know, start with yourself, start with your family and then uh, things will get better. So uh, how do we follow you on social media? Uh, social media, I am bigger fish to fry all across the board. And um, that's pretty much everything I am. The only place I think I'm not is Facebook and that's Eleanor Ward, but it'll still lead you to me no matter what. So I'm bigger fish to fry on Instagram, on TikTok, all that stuff. And uh, so I'm pretty easy to find. <laughs> pretty easy. Yeah. Okay. Eleanor, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, y'all. Let's give her a hand clap. Woo! Thank you for having me. Thank you for featuring the magazine. It's, it's, it's been a blessing. And I can say the magazine has kind of saved me. It pushed me to push myself. So put that other idea to the side. You know, I know Lakeisha had tons of other ideas, but this is what's pushing her out there and pushing her forward. And the other ideas will come later. And Prosperity Business Magazine pushed me to do other things to get other stuff going. But it's been the catalyst. So there's nothing wrong with saying, okay, I want to do this, whatever it is. And then just saying, you know what? I'm just going to wait because that's not happening. And sometimes it's not. It's not that you're not popping. It's not that you're not happy. But that particular idea is just not happening in the way because it may be how you're executing it. So guys, look for us for the March issue coming out soon. And definitely keep 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 up with the Open Book Club. I'm super happy to be here. And I, I love to support her because I think she's doing amazing things. And I appreciate her having me on today. Yay! <laughs> I love you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And what I want to do, if anyone out there for her March issue, uh, if you want to write an article, inbox me. First person that inboxes me, I will pay for your space for that particular issue. So uh, that will be a gift from the Open Book. 
Uh, I want to say thank you so much. This was so much fun. I'm glad my kids stayed at bay. Hopefully the house is still fine <laughs> when I leave out of here. But y'all, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we will have uh, day 11 this Thursday with another special guest. Uh, she's going to talk about uh, her three-part series, fictional series, uh, looks like a very interesting series too. So I'm so excited, uh, looking forward to that. And then day 12 will be a day of relaxation because that will take us to Christmas day. But I will be on location and show you a few things uh, where we are for day 12 of our Books and Businesses uh, event. Next month, we will start our Michael Todd's Crazy Fate book series. Um, so those of you that have not gotten the book yet, make sure you get the book or you can get the audio if you want to, you know, and follow along with us. Each week we will have live weekly discussion, not just discussing, but we're going to have journals. So get you a journal and uh, I will have some guests, a host, like they're going to host with me. So I'm already in the process of talking to some people. Uh, but y'all, our faith level is about to go to another level. Mine has already started. I'm believing God. And Illinois just said, this is a catalyst. I'm believing that we'll be on TV one day. So all of these guests that are virtual, we're going to be in our own studio having this open book conversation. And, and I, I told my husband, I said, I feel like Tyler Perry, when he has written, produced, directed, all says Tyler Perry, I'm trying to do everything at one time. I'm like, I hope I'm hitting stuff right. So God will give me little ideas to try this, try that. Uh, but one day, we just never know. So look for some great things uh, to take place with the open book, especially going into next year. Uh, a lot of great things coming up, but we want to say thank you to every special guest that we've had. Thank you, Eleanor, tonight uh, for joining us. And y'all, we hope to see you this Thursday at 7 p.m. I will uh, share that information about our special guest author uh, who will join us. So hopefully you get some rest this week and we'll see you Thursday. Have a good night. Happy holidays, everybody. <laughs>